morning. We want to welcome the Reverend Patrick Vandermotter, who is our presiding uh, today and our preacher. I'm not going to tell you about any of the announcements. You all are capable of reading them in the back of the bulletin. We'll probably cut five minutes off the worship service by not doing that. So if you would, as you are able, rise for the opening or gathering hymn. It's on page 12 or 13 and 13 in your bulletin. God is here. Blessed be the God, the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends gathered together, let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does.
God of mercy and forgive, give, forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn, Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to a new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Benevolent, merciful God, when we are empty, fill us. When we are weak in faith, strengthen us. When we are cold in love, warm us, that with fervor we may love our neighbors and serve them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson is found in Habakkuk chapter 1. 
The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what the Lord will say to me and what the Lord will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them. But the righteous live by their faith. Word of God, word of life. Amen. And we will read Psalm 37 responsively. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. Our second lesson is found in 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, <coughs> not according to our works, but according to God's own purpose and grace. 
This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust. I am sure that God is able to guard until that day everything that I have entrusted to God. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table. Would you not rather say, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink, later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. Thank you for having me back. I hope this won't be the last time. I must have been okay the last, you know, when I first did this, that I got another invitation. So, bless you. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Now, all the other stuff of the good news, the gospel, well, I should have checked the readings before I said yes. But here we go. Actually, Just taking one line from Jesus is enough to preach on for a while. Now, have you seen, you've seen Jack in the Boxes, right? I'm talking to people who actually probably owned one of those at one time, because I know I did. So, have you ever, you know, you keep cranking and it pops up. Do you remember the words that go with the song? All around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. The monkey stopped to pull up his sock. Pop goes the weasel. And pop, up pops this evil-looking clown thing to scare the kids. No, no wonder. There's a phobia for uh, clowns, one of the leading phobias, and I think that's one of the reasons. There's a phobia of clowns. But there are other things that go pop. 
They pop up suddenly in order to scare you. Things like TV evangelists, preachers that want to tell you where to go and when. They have these screwed up faces sometimes and they always seem like they're out of breath. You know, those are the fire and brimstone preaching that Lutherans don't really do very well. How many check marks you have to have to get into heaven? How to climb the ladder of holiness like you climb the ladder of success here on earth, right? Not. I always wondered if there was a phobia for preachers and televangelists. And actually, I did Google it once, and there is. It's called ecclesiophobia. Very interesting because when you hear what Jesus actually teaches and what these clowns, I mean preachers, <laughs> preach, well, there seems to be some kind of disconnect there. Jesus tells us all you need is faith the size of a, size of a mustard seed. Mustard seeds aren't very big, are they? They're about this big. And if you have faith this size, you could say to the mulberry tree, be planted in the sea, and it would be done. Now, I've tried this. I've not been able to move the mulberry bush or any other kind of tree or even a potted plant. None of them were uprooted and were planted in the sea or the lake or the creek or any other body of water. But I still believe that I have faith, a faith that is old, a Christian faith. A Christian faith is a faith that is spread to the four corners of the world. It started in Palestine, where one lone Christian pastor, shepherd, leader, teacher sat down for some dinner. He wasn't called a Christian pastor at that time. He was just Jesus, who became Jesus the Christ, the anointed. He was shepherding a whole flock of, well, not so bright people sometimes. Yes, Jesus said all of this about a bunch of fishermen in ne'er-do-well who would soon betray him, deny him, and desert him. And Jesus knew it. And Jesus did it anyway. He knew that they would sin. And he forgave them even before they could actually do the sinning. Now, I remember a commercial with this guy who talks to kids, and he was looking for a number, and the number was infinity plus, or no, infinity plus infinity. And there's a little girl on there. What about infinity times infinity? And the guy goes, Phew. mind explosion. But really, infinity plus infinity times, infinity by itself. I don't think people who want to use a, you know, a calculator just to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, they don't really care about this infinity thing, whether it's plus infinity times infinity, whatever. Sometimes we burden ourselves with this trying to figure out everything to the finest detail. And I know something about that, because I'm an engineer. And yes, we try to always figure it out to the finest detail. We don't do that simple thing of having faith. Jesus says that if we have uh, faith the size of a mustard seed, we can do great things. And that little bit of faith is pretty small, 
if it's the size of a mustard seed. So there, here's the thing. Maybe it isn't about the size or even the quantity of faith that you have. Jesus is saying that it isn't, it isn't the qua uh, quantity, it's the quality or intensity or strength or veracity of your faith. But what do you have faith in? Who do you have faith in? Do you have faith in money? Do you have faith in political parties? Do you have faith in banks? Do you have faith in scientists? Do you have faith in God? Our God who declared over and over again, I shall not leave you or forsake you. I kind of call that um, the light switch faith, binary faith, digital faith. The light is on, the light is off. I have faith in God. I don't have faith. I have faith in in God. There is no less or no more. There is no, you need to have more faith. Or as the apostles put it, increase our faith. It isn't a linear algorithm. It's digital. It's on or off. Faith is trust that God will come through with the promises even though it might take a long time. And the prophets can tell you something about that as they wait and they wait and they wait for the fulfilling of God's word. And you know what God says? Hold on. It's not time yet. Because God's time is God's time. But they still sit back as Habakkuk said he'll go up to the watchtower and walk around the parapet and keep waiting on the Lord because he has faith that the Lord will do what the Lord said he would do. Faith. Faith in Jesus, that he comes from God, that he is our Savior, that he is the anointed, that he is the Messiah. We have faith that spans the world. And usually in October, we celebrate World Communion Sunday. I honestly don't know when that is this October because I'm retired and I don't have to anymore. We celebrate communion all around the world on this Sunday with all the Christians of the world in so many different traditions, in so many different countries, in so many different ways of saying. It's hard to count them all, but we share that faith in common. What is that faith? It's the faith that Jesus is our Messiah, is the anointed one, is our savior and that he comes from God in heaven. Jesus has told us that we will feast with him in heaven. Do we have faith in this promise? When we feast at our communion table, it, it really isn't a feast now, is it? You know, you get a little piece of bread and a little cup of wine that's not what I call a feast, but this is the foretaste of that feast that will come to us, that we participate in when we see Jesus finally. This is the feast that we will partake in now, but the kingdom of God is just breaking in a little bit and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more, until we have heaven here on earth, as the book of Revelation puts it. And I saw a new heaven and new earth descend down to 
earth, uh, New Jerusalem descends down to earth. This is the feast that Jesus has promised us for as long, and he promises also rest and healing, and even promises our own fig tree and grapevine. That would be cool too, but to feast with Jesus, that is a promise. Faith is trusting in those promises that God has made to us, for us. That's it. But it's so hard sometimes. But when we trust in Jesus, when we trust in the promises, when we know that our God is true and fulfills all of those promises, then we have at least faith the size of a mustard seed. Haven't been able to move that mulberry tree yet, but maybe we can move across the room and share our faith with others that you see. It's a small thing. Smaller, in fact, than a mustard seed. But it keeps our faith moving around the four corners of the world and back again. Thanks be to God. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Gracious God, 
We pray for your holy church in every place and for those who serve following the example of Christ. Help them to live by faith and walk by the light of your gospel. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Loving God, for parts of the world ravaged by natural disaster, floods, wildfires, droughts, earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. Bring your comfort, healing, and hope to those who have lost their homes, family members, and others who may love. God of grace, hear our prayer. For every nation and for those entrusted with authority, grant our leaders self-discipline in all things and inspire them with wisdom and love for your people. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Holy God, for victims of violence, abuse, and neglect, heal those who have been harmed and protect those who are vulnerable. For all who are sick, and those who have requested our prayer, we hold them up now before you, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Bring your perfect healing to all those who wait. God of grace. Amen. For this and every congregation, Rekindle your gifts within your people and inspire councils, committees, and individuals to plan and work together that all may know your love, peace, and power. God of grace. Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving that you have abolished death, and for the saints who have died and been an example of faith, bring all of us to eternal life with you, God of grace. Yeah. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. If you wish to share peace, be, do so now. You can use elbow bumps or even just wave I and peace be with you. <laughs>
Please rise. We pray, gracious God, in your great love you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It has been shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
At this time, uh, for the people who would like to receive their communion in their pews, or for those people on Zoom, if you can prepare your bread and wine now. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste and see. To all those who are receiving communion in the pew and all those on Zoom, be assured, this is the body of Christ given for you. And be assured, this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
we pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now God who gives to all things and he, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Our sending him is How Firm a Foundation. <clears throat>